Ну, It is May of 2023, and it actually cooled off a little bit this week. It did. So it we got up to really 100. Nice. Got up to 100 degrees last weekend, and then we're back down into the mid 70s. Mm -hmm. So it's beautiful. You got a couple things done this week. So actually, more new arrivals. Yes, we got our new layers in that we ordered. So those are in the brooder. They're doing really good. Yeah. We just went with two varieties this time. The white leghorn and the production red or one of the reds. So obviously we, we like to get our chicks from Ideal Poultry mm -hmm. and we get those in the mail as day or two old chicks mm -hmm. and they do really well. So we did lose one, which is kind of unusual for us, but um, we, overall we've got a few and we're sharing a few of those with Jake and Shay. Yes. So our neighbors across the street, they'll be getting a few of those as well. So they get some egg production. So we decided to change our minds on the tops of the new duck and turkey enclosures and just leave the wood. But we didn't want it wood colored. No, so I painted it green to kind of match the shade cloth that goes around them. Yeah, what's nice when we're looking outside of the window of the house and looking this direction, we've got our neighbor who's got uh, a storage container out there, which is tan, but all the trees are growing in green and then those are in front of the trees and they're green as well. Yeah. So it just looks like a nice big green backdrop. Yep. For us. So one of the things that happens this time of year is we have our ducks that are just spread out across the farm. Oh, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. They all like to go and find a little nesting spot and they start stashing their eggs back there and each one of them has their own little spot. A couple of them have been there for a few weeks and a couple of them are just finding spots. Well, I think when, because they'll find a spot but then we'll take the eggs. So they lay there like maybe twice and then since their eggs keep disappearing they find another spot. So we're constantly on the lookout of where ducks are going and where we have eggs. And what's funny, we had one night we came out, we thought we'd lost one of the layers. Yes. Right? And we were a little, we were kind of bummed. You know, I mean it happens, but you know, we were kind of bummed about it because we hadn't had problems before. 
So you come out the following morning and she, <laughs> she was at the enclosure at the door like, hello, I can't get in. <laughs> it's time for me to come in, guys. Well, what's going on? So then you fi we finally, we looked everywhere the night before and could not find her. The one spot really that we didn't check that she could hide in was over in the pomegranate. Yeah, I kept looking over there at them when we were searching for them. I'm like, oh no, she didn't go all the way back there. <laughs> sure enough, the next morning, when she was at the door over here, I was like, oh, okay, I better go check them. And sure enough, there's like a nest down there with six or eight eggs. And that's where she decided that's to be. That's where she was, yep. <laughs> so we got a couple things we need to get done. Sounds like there's construction going on behind us. So let's just uh, go get to work. Okay. There we go. Morning, what you watched us do was get our Cooney pigs moved out of their temporary house. We had them in there because we wanted to make sure we didn't have any problems with predators when they were really, really small. They're definitely big enough now. I don't know if we got it on camera. I had a heck of a time lifting up Priscilla and holding her. She was fighting like crazy, not knowing what I was doing. She's calmed down since, but uh, they're definitely tough little guys. So what we have here is actually gonna be the permanent enclosure for Winston our male pig. Our boar is actually gonna be separated from the girls here pretty shortly after a few months. That way he knows that uh, the girls are for breeding and not for friends. But this will be his permanent enclosure. Now what we will be doing is expanding this, adding a couple of gates in here so we can move the pigs back and forth. Once we have the large pigs moved to the processor and we can use the small barn that's over there that we're gonna be renaming. So now what we're gonna be doing is expanding the turkey area so that it's ready for our Thanksgiving turkeys, which will arrive here in the middle of summer. You gotta get kind of up on the area where it connects. They work great to hold things in place. Getting yeah. it off sucks. Yeah.
What you saw us doing was expanding where we're gonna be keeping our Thanksgiving turkeys. So we had these two enclosures we were using temporarily here and also with the ducks. Expanded to double the size for the turkeys. We wanted to give them more space when they're in their coop. We also wanted to change out what we had up top. We wanna to give them more of a permanent home and make sure they have something to get out of the weather here during the summertime. What we're using is two of the panels that are gonna be laying down flat on the top of this, and then we'll be adding some plywood across the top to give it more of a permanent actual roof. So we're still not done today. We need to pick up a few things from Home Depot, so hopefully we can get this done next weekend. We're here at the front of the farm, and this is our Champagne Loquat. Now, we have four different varieties of Loquats here on the farm. The Champagne Loquat is the first one to ripen. We've got some ripe fruit behind me here. We also have the Macbeth, which is ripening about now. In fact, we've got one or two that we'll probably pick today. And we have the Gold Nugget, which actually is the last one, still all green fruit. Now, we also have a big gem. That one has not actually fruited yet. It stunted a little bit here because we have it in partial shade during the winter time. And that's actually what I wanted to talk about today. We get a lot of questions when it comes to loquats and growing them here in the desert. How do you plant them? Are they in full sun? Do you have to protect them from the summer sun? Do you need to protect them from the winter frost? And I can tell you, they're actually a lot easier than you would think. The number one most important thing that we found is planting time. These trees thrive during the winter time. They have no problem with our frost here at all. And planting them in the month of October here in Arizona, we found is the key. We're still warm enough that the plants themselves will grow a little bit going into the winter. With the heavy mulch on the ground, they're spreading those feeder roots out all winter long. So when they get into spring and then into summer where they really do struggle just a little bit, you don't have any issues because they've got that nice solid root mass that's already grown in for several months. So you can see this tree behind me here has a nice heavy fruit set. I'm underneath the canopy of this tree and you can see that we're still here in full sun. They definitely need full sun, no shade, nothing like that. They need that in order to grow. And we found that the only thing they do is they do stunt and they'll start to lose some of their leaves will get kind of brown here during the summertime. But again, planting in October, they get through that first summer just fine and you'll see a fruit set just like this. Mm. That was a good one, sweets. Another question we get when it comes to loquats is what do they taste like? The best description I can give is it's somewhere between like a, a citrus and a melon. Even had some folks say it's a little bit like a mango, although I don't, you don't have that flavor in my opinion, definitely not the same texture, but the texture itself is probably something between a citrus and a melon. Nice, beautiful, sweet, a little bit of tart at the same time. Just a wonderful, wonderful fruit for us here in Arizona. So we got another day on the farm today. It's early morning, Sunday. We actually had the turkeys out for the first time. Tried to. <laughs> Tried to. And the girls were all like, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Cuddle's been out there before, so he's like, yeah, I'm out. Come on, girls. Or he was just protecting them from us. I think he came out because Monica came out and was mm. like, 
wanting to get in between us. That's true. He's like, that's my girl. But then he stayed. Monica went back in and he stayed out. And then the girl started getting all puffy. Yeah, it was weird. It was weird. But they're still in there now. We'll see. They can wander. Oh no, Ebony looks like Ebony came out. out. Yep. So it'll be cool to have them out on the farm with the ducks. Yeah. Kind of wander a little bit. They're not as destructive as the chickens. Yeah. But this, the chickens are behind us. They got 6,000 square feet of green pasture. Yeah, they're good. So, so we're also gonna test something out with sunflower seeds. And Dan, thank you. Uh, he's last name namesake uh, yeah. of ours. But he gifted us with a one of those full-size sunflowers. I don't remember the type, but he had those growing. We had a head that we saved from last year. So we figured we'd go ahead and throw them over with the bananas. Yeah. Or the banana. The banana. <laughs> but the banana's doing good. Banana's doing great. And I think with the ground cover from the sweet potatoes that are coming back, once those grow in and it holds the moisture in better for those sunflower seeds, I think maybe we'll get some sunflowers. And those are nice tall ones too. Yeah. So those we can feed to the chickens and the turkeys and the ducks. Okay. And the pigs and the people. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets some. Everybody. So you can see the loquat behind us. We're going to grab a couple of those uh, to top off our mulberry breakfast that we had this morning, right? So we get a few of those and then spend the rest of the day chilling and not doing a darn thing. Oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I lied. Oh, darn it. We got work to do. <laughs> I was all excited. I'm like, oh, yes. Can we make some popcorn? <laughs> uh, we might. <laughs> so just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We cover a lot of things here on this newly established functioning farm in the Arizona desert. We'd love to see you on a regular basis. If you have any questions or comments, those go where? Comment section down below. That's right. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with the link down below, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go have some popcorn. Oh, yes. Yeah, I lied. We're getting to work. <laughs> <laughs> I think Wilma's laying in the thing again. Yep. That's the wrong spot, girl. I'm glad we have the reverse honking in the background. That's nice. Always construction. You got a couple things done this week. So, actually, more new arrivals. Yes. Oh, was I, I didn't know <laughs> was I supposed to say something? Well, you were the one that did it, so I thought, well, maybe. Well, you, guys, <laughs> you never know. Half the time you're like, e I don't know. I think I got poop on my pants. <laughs> Jack had to poo on me. You don't know what to say? I'm just gonna let you do this one. What? <laughs> I'm just gonna let you do this one. What do you do this one? Do this one, do the closing. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Let's do it. Go.